country is safe now. I want to tell you this. This small respite is for them the best time to carry out the killings without anyone noticing it. This is a man we will call Martin. He worked for the regime and fled the country in 2018 because he feared for his life. Let me repeat this. They have long list of people to be killed. They have list of army elements, police officers and civil servants who are to be killed because they are believed to be dissident or people who are believed not to support the ruling party enough. They have changed their operating mode, the cars, the body bags, the tents, the agents that they use in their new system. At the moment, the country is silent, but people continue to die and there will be no one left. By asking questions about what happened in this house, we have found disturbing evidence that Burundi's government is still eliminating opposition to its rule. Multiple witnesses have told us about a hidden but systematic program of torture and killing. Local dissidents have a name for this. They call it Kame Kame, one by one. hours a day, seven days a week. You can watch NTA International live on your TV, computer, iPad, tablet and phone. Log on to visiontv.co.uk and click on entertainment, then NTAI. You can also download the iOS or Android app on your mobile devices to watch NTA International on the go, anywhere in the world. NTA International your window to the world.
Unity Esports 24, where sports drive. Thanks for joining us on the news at 7 on NT International. We're live in Abuja and I am Ruth Aguela. Let's bring you the headlines. Supreme Court dismisses all progressives Congress application for review of Bielsa governorship verdict for lack of merit. Chairman and members of National Assembly Service Commission take oath of office. Plus, stakeholders explore multinational engagements to tackle insecurity in the Northwest. We begin with FEC, a meeting of the Federal Executive Council. The highest policy decision-making organ of the Nigerian government has been concluded at the presidential villa. The meeting was presided over by President Muhammad Buhari. State House correspondent Adam Sambo will bring us the details in our subsequent bulletin. 
Let's look at all the issues. The newly appointed chairman and commissioners of the National Assembly Service Commission have been inaugurated. The inauguration ceremony, which preceded the weekly meeting of the Federal Executive Council, was performed by President Muhammad Buhari. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has the details. Our dual right to all manner of people according to law. Ahmed Kadi Amshi, fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers from Yobe State, is the chairman of the commission established in line with the provisions of Section 3, Subsection 4 of the National Assembly Service Act 2014. Born in 1954, Ahmed Amshi is a first-class bachelor's degree holder in mechanical engineering and master's in public administration from the University of My Degree. He served as permanent secretary in the Yobe State Civil Service, executive secretary, Nigerian Society of Engineers and was also the Chief of Staff to the then Senate leader between 2017 and 2019. Those sworn in as members of the commission were Baba Gana Modu, Borno, Senator Abubakar Tutare, Taraba, Hakim Olabode Akamu, Lagos, Motun Rayu, Akin Tomide, Ondo, Francis Atano, Mayowi, Delta, and Basi Olushagun Etuk, Akwaibom State. Others are Yusuf Biliamin Shinkafi, Zamfara State, Sani Said, Kazaure, Jigawa State, Senator Julius Ali Ucha, Ebonyi, Awalu Aliyu Ohindase, Kogi, and Muazu Ishak Nasarawa. There was no presidential address at the ceremony, but the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, expressed confidence in the ability of the newly appointed members of the National Assembly Service Commission to live up to expectations. You will agree with me that we have a very high quality, high caliber of uh, people uh, on this commission, and therefore we expect uh, that the commission will be uh, very effective and efficient, and the time is of essence. Members of the National Assembly need the kind of staff and is that will en enhance our activities and our uh, performance. The business starts today and I believe they will, uh, uh, they will operate optimally in the interest of the National Assembly, in the interest of the country most importantly. So we're looking forward to a robust uh, National Assembly Service Commission. The chairman of the commission, Ahmed Amshi, and other members were full of gratitude to President Muhammad Buhari for the confidence reposed in them and promised not to disappoint. We are really ready to put in our best with our past experiences to see how we'll move the nation forward in this line of assignment that we are put into. We have already set our agenda to make sure that we have a high capacity National Assembly staff that will work with the legislators to make their work easy, simple and they, they give us a good legislation to the nation. And according to the hopes we took today, we'll stick by that and make sure that the commission and the staff are really proud of our administration. We are going to work as a team and achieve the desired result, the rule of law we prevail. With two members drawn from each of the six geopolitical zones of the country, the National Assembly Service Commission leadership is to run a five-year renewable tenure. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And to health as the global tuberculosis champion and ambassador, the first lady of Nigeria, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, has restated that she will not relent in her advocacy until the epidemic of TB has come to an end in Nigeria and the world at large. The first lady stated this in a message during an interactive meeting with a network to of Stop TB Partnership and other stakeholders in the fight against tuberculosis and non-communicable diseases in Nigeria. Let's hear from State House correspondent Ali Yukavir. The meeting with all stakeholders in attendance was headed by the wife of the Vice President Olapo Shinbajo, who is standing in for the First Lady. It was aimed at improving the strategy towards killing up actions in an effort to end TB in Nigeria and the world at large, in line with the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals target. I look forward to your recommendations and I promise to advocate for the implementation of any action that is agreed upon. I also want to solicit for more of your support. With Nigeria having the large share of the global burden, the First Lady examined some of the successes story in managing the disease in the country, especially with the wives of the governors of Nigeria or TB champions in their states, urging that still more needs to be done in ending tuberculosis. This is a collective task for all stakeholders in this ecosystem. 
we must work collectively together to achieve the sustainable development goals in that respect. So as well to say that as a global TV ambassador, she's doing everything possible as far as um, contributing to the end of tuberculosis in Nigeria. The representatives of the development partners from the WHO, United Nations Development Fund, UNFPA, Stop TB Partnership, UNICEF and the World Bank, among others, reaffirmed commitment in joining forces to end TB and other communicable diseases in the world. No one of these ambitious goals of the sustainable development agenda will be reached if uh, our People, population will not be healthy, will not have access to the modern health care services. Stakeholders also believed that with all hands on deck, the epidemic of TB will be completely killed and eradicated. From the State House, Ali Wukabir, NTN. In a related development, a delegation from the World Health Organization, led by the Director of Global Tuberculosis Program, Dr. Teresa Kaseva, met with the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, during which both parties reaffirmed their commitment towards combating non-communicable diseases in Nigeria. Senator Lawan harped on the need for improved funding of Nigeria's health sector as he sought the support of the World Health Organization in putting an end to the scourge of tuberculosis in Nigeria. I'm constrained by the paucity of funds. Uh, we wish we could have more funds, but we are also concerned that while we are trying to do our best, uh, the United Nations uh, and other world organizations like World Health Organization are trying to, to support our country. So we hope that this support for the uh, non-communicable diseases will continue and uh, be even expanded. We are here today in Nigeria because Nigeria is one of our priority countries and we reaffirm our commitment and strong position and willingness to provide all necessary uh, support to the country to be sure that health system is strengthened and access to all essential health care services is provided to all the citizens, to all the population of Nigeria. And we must say and acknowledge your efforts. The delegation advised Nigeria to increase its domestic investment on the primary health care. And still staying with health, women and girls living with disability have feelings and sexual emotions as disability is not a means of being exerced. Let me take that again. Women with disability, like all the women, have the right to express affection and rights to free relationship and association and should be allowed to choose the time and number of children to have for a healthy reproductive life. This is the essence of the capacity building by Disability Rights Advocacy Centre with journalists on sexual and reproductive health rights of women and girls with disability. Basi Itang Ikbang will tell us more. Motherhood is said to be a thing of joy, but most times women that embark on this journey do not return home alive. This is the reason for the capacity building on sexual and reproductive rights of persons living with disability. We're looking at the sexuality of women and girls with disabilities. We're looking at their sexual health, their reproductive rights, which they should have on an equal basis with others. So we want the media to help us in shaping societal perceptions of um, women with disabilities. Dr. Irene, who is the major resource person at this meeting, enumerated some challenges they face. We've had cases of where um, deaf women who are in labor have been told push, push, push by the service provider and they did not hear push and they didn't know when to push and eventually the baby died. In fact, we've had cases where uh, drivers sign consent forms on behalf of blind women without even asking them those in wheelchairs do not get weighed in the hospitals because there's no machine, there's no equipment that can weigh someone sitting in a wheelchair. We don't get mammograms. You know, because the equipment requires that you stand and women who have uh, mobility impairments cannot stand. Journalists learnt new ways of reporting on people with disability. Disability, so to say, is not just 
whatever is the physical impairment that a person with disability has, but it's about the barriers that society creates for them. The I'm a journalist, you know they have this right. I mean, this is something we see on a daily basis, the abuses that we just think it's normal just because they live with disabilities. As much as they are disabled, it does not take away their rights from them. They have the independence of living, so we should be able to champion that. The need for the implementation of the National Disability Act dominated discussions at the two-day event. Basi Taikbang, NTN News. And to security matters, efforts are being intensified through multinational engagement to boost the fight against insurgency in the Northwest. The Pastoral Resolve explores common grounds as various Nigerian groups and the French Embassy in Nigeria work on latest strategy to be adopted to promote peace, particularly in Zamfara State. Let's hear from Salihu Abdullahi. Farming is our pride the slogan of Zamfara, an agrarian state in northwestern Nigeria. Currently, Zamfara is challenged with banditry, undermining the enormous agricultural potential the state possesses. Let's be open today, let's be frank, let's see how we can contribute to solving this situation. Hundreds of families are homeless and access to school and health services has been further impeded. The hazard of productive, I mean conducive and enabling environment of Zamfara State in attracting foreign investors is no longer attractive to investors within and outside the state. Frank deliberation to make effective the fight against insecurity is the main aim of this forum. It's a multidimensional approach. The media has a role to play. Religious and traditional institutions, they also have a role to play. Now you hardly even hear attack because the the government is doing its very possible best which is one of the reasons why we are here you know having discussions trying to understand what is happening and looking at the way forward the deliberation submits that politics religion and tribe rather than being used for selfish gains could be harnessed to promote peace in abuja salihu abdullahi nta news Still on security, but this time around for women, as the patience and sensitivity of women can be handy in critical conflict resolution dynamics of the military. Electro in Abuja aimed at encouraging greater inclusion of women in the armed forces, examined leadership areas where the unique characteristics of women can be utilized for service to the nation. Let's hear from Kelvin Ehonwahe. The military is presumed to be a unique profession. It is physical and military operations are risky. Observers believe that these attributes of the military makes it unattractive for many women. This lecture at the auspices of the Center for Gender Security Studies and Youth Advancement at University of Abuja is essentially to change the narrative. There is no job without its associated risk. Going by my personal experience, I can, testi I can testify that the military as a profession is a noble one. We have seen them during their shooting competitions. We have seen that males, we females, are even outdoing the men. The men. Why don't you give them the opportunity to do what they can do? Let them fulfill their potentials. Don't think for them. Like catch them young. This is a learning institution and most of them are just in hundred level. They may even decide to change their mind to pick the form to join the academy. The revelations by female members of the armed forces certainly rubbed off on Vivian Chije. She's a 300 level student of theater arts. Now, Vivian fancied a career in the armed forces. They leave the comfort of their houses, their family, just to go out there to save people. So sure, uh, I'm really motivated you know, to become one of them, like a soldier in particular. Sustaining awareness forums like this can help in raising the cautiousness among young girls to emulate flying officer Kafayat Sani, female fighter pilot in the Nigerian Air Force. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewunwai, NTA News. And more Greece to the elbow of our women fighters. Let's take a break. We'll be back shortly, so stay tuned.
Thanks for being there. The Supreme Court has dismissed the application filed by the All Progressives Congress and former governor-elect and his deputy in Bayosa State seeking review of its earlier judgment. The judgment, read by Justice Amina Oji, dismissed the application for lack of merit. Vera Chungwoba reports that the court awarded 30 million naira costs against the three applicants. In a unanimous decision, the seven-man panel of the Apex Court held that the application filed by the APC and its members lacks merit and that the applicants failed to point out the error. The judgment, read by Justice Amina Angui, said the application is frivolous and an abuse of court process. She said the decision of the court is final in line with Section 225 of the Constitution and that the court does not sit and appeal over its decision emphasizing that there must be an end to litigation. The court also held that a situation where every dissatisfied litigant will bring similar application will amount to bringing the finality of the court judgment being lost. Justice Angu awarded 10 million naira cost against each applicant to be paid by their counters to PDP. Counsel to David Leon Afebabalala earlier argued that the court acted without jurisdiction and also denied his client fair hearing. Counsel to PDP Tayo Yotibo had asked the court to dismiss the application as no element of fraud had been established. This judgment today has re-established the finality of the position of the Supreme Court and judgments of the Supreme Court. It would have been scandalous if the court had acceded to the request to review and change its judgment two weeks after it was delivered. Because it were so, you will find that even judgments that were delivered 10 years ago will be brought back to this court to be changed. The court is trying to discourage such application from the younger ones. The APC had brought the application seeking review of its February 13th judgment, which overturned APC's victory in the Bayelsa state governorship election. In Abuja, Viera Chumuba, NTA News. Let's look at religious martyrs. The lengthened period when Christian faithful engage in intense fasting and prayers have commenced, with clergy appealing for peace in Nigeria. Ngozi Technical will tell us more. This is not the usual Sunday worship of the Christian faithful. These faithful are worshipping to commence the lengthened period on what is called Arch Wednesday. It is an ancient tradition of the Orthodox churches to remind Christians of the penitence and suffering of Jesus Christ. In the NTA Chapel of Resurrection, members of the Christian faithful were admonished to use the period to fast, devote more time to pray for oneself and the nation. When you fast, it seek, you get more grace from God. You get greater substance. And then when you fast and pray, it can change things. For us to sit back and reflect on the supreme sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ paid on the cross. So at this time, Christians are expected to go back into their closets, check their lives, see how well they fed. You know, it's a time of meditation. It's a time that you try and check how well have I fed, where have I gone wrong, and a time to get it right with Christ. The Lenten period lasts 40 days, with climbers being the Easter. Ngozi Silva, Technical, NTA News. And to legislative affairs, the House of Representatives has resolved to conduct an investigation on alleged excess charges by banks on individuals and corporate bodies. The House noted that despite intervention by the Central Bank of Nigeria to stop excess charges by way of regulation, the practice remains thus eroding customer confidence. The House Committee on Banking will liaise with relevant agencies to carry out the investigation. The lawmakers also urged the federal government to ensure rapid response towards Corbyn, the spread of Lassa fever and other communicable diseases. Wednesday, plenary passed a bill to establish Chartered Institute of Public Administration, while a bill to establish Federal College of Education in Oshun State passed through second reading. And business news is next with Onenge Fine Face. The 
Corporate Affairs Commission is reviewing its business name registration processes by removing unnecessary interferences that cost prospective business owners extra money to register with the commission. Under the new arrangement, prospective business owners can walk into any branch of the commission across the country and register a business name without the assistance of middlemen. This is part of decisions made in meeting to assess the progress of the small and medium scale enterprises programs of the federal government at the instance of Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. Similarly, Bank of Industry has approved a $20 million technology fund for young inventors. According to the managing director of the bank, Kayo De Pitan, the fund is part of measures to support the federal government in encouraging technology innovators to start up viable businesses in the sector. National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, will monitor progress by beneficiaries of the fund. And in the agricultural sector, the central bank is offering 90 billion naira soft loan facility to small-scale agricultural enterprises under the Agri-Business and Small and Medium Enterprises Investment Scheme. The loan is offered through the 56 branches of the National Microfinance Bank across the country. So far, CBN has disbursed 20,000 naira to 7,000 beneficiaries with plans to give out additional 5 billion naira monthly to more beneficiaries. That's business news. I'm Onegye Fineface. Fine Thank you, Onenge. Let's take you to Geneva, where we hear world leaders in Geneva, Switzerland, are voicing hope for the international community to support the mandate and operations of the United Nations in its quest to strengthen institutions in upholding the human rights of all. At the fourth third high-level session of the United Nations Human Rights Council, currently holding, the representatives of various countries, including Algeria, give account of their commitments to human rights its protection. Osman Aliyu reports from Geneva. Amid deepening concern on human rights issues at this time when some parts of the world are affected by war and conflicts, world leaders at this United Nations office in Geneva condemned abuses on human rights, more especially violence against women and girls, rights of religion and beliefs. Most speakers from different parts of the world unanimously called for an action stopping human rights violation once and for all. Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister Jeffrey Onyama restated that though the country is fighting terrorism, her commitment to the promotion and protection of human rights remain within guidelines of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Nigeria has created a Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and social development. This is to enable us to respond adequately and expeditiously to humanitarian emergencies in the country. Nigeria recognizes the importance of adherence to international human rights obligations. With the establishment of a human rights desk at the headquarters and formations of the armed forces and the inauguration of the Department of Civil Military Relations, our military and security agencies are continually sensitized on the imperative of respect for human rights while countering terrorism. Nigeria also used the forum to tell the world that false information going around, particularly in the social media, denting image of Nigerian army is the work of mischief makers. I think it was important that we were here uh, to make this presentation because now in the, uh, the social media, there are a lot of um, images uh, and uh, videos of uh, ostensibly Nigerian troops uh, torturing um, prisoners and so forth. And a number of countries uh, have uh, reached out to, to us as a government uh, to express their concern. And, um, you know, we've been very keen uh, to tell them that the government policy is very clear. Fourteen member states were elected into the Human Rights Council at the 74th General Assembly of the United Nations. In Geneva, Usman Aliou, NT News. And talking sports, Nigeria Olympic Committee sensitizes fans on Tokyo 2020 Olympic tickets. Tamara Ebiwe is our guide on sports update. 